everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are going to be taking a look at part two out of three of our disassembly for our GM 5.3 liter LS engine. Uh, it's really important to take this thing apart in the correct way and get it prepped and ready for the machine shop which will be later on in this build. Now before we go any further, I want to mention that this build is sponsored by Summit Racing. They won't be sending me any money, but they will be sending me some really cool speed parts later on in this build as well. So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, remove your cylinder heads and harmonic balancer and a couple other uh, little things here and there. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So for today, the first thing we're going to focus on is the oil pressure switch here. Now, it might look like a regular nut arrangement down here at the base and you think you could get a big enough uh, wrench on there, but that's not really the case. What you actually need is this special socket. I have this USA made one. Uh, I have left a link down below in the description to it and you can look in there and you can actually see there's little bits of, uh, it looks like a regular hex socket, but there's little lobes at the very tip of each point and those are essential for getting the switch out. So we can go ahead and put that on make sure it fits and then remove it. It comes out really easy when you have the right tools. And there's our switch and we can set that aside. The next thing we're gonna focus on is removing our camshaft positioning sensor. It's held in with one 10 millimeter bolt. And we can grab a flathead screwdriver and kinda pry our way in there. There's a little O-ring holding it in so it might fight you just a little bit, but with a little persuasion, we can remove it, see that's the O-ring we were fighting earlier. All right, the next thing we can do is remove our two knock sensors using a 22 millimeter socket. Typically you can just break those loose and then uh, they come out really easily. And that's what those look like. We can go ahead and set those aside. So now we can remove the 10, 10 millimeter bolts that hold the lifter valley cover on. Go. There's all 10. So now we can get a uh, flat implement here and uh, jimmy our plate off here because it's probably, yeah, it is. It's pretty gooped on there. That's a nice seal we're breaking on the right. Move to the left here. There we go. Oh, there we go. Go ahead and remove that. Set that aside, we will need this later. So you can see this is where uh, GM put these knock sensors here. It's actually a really good place for them. Think about them as little microphones. If they're nice and deep in the engine and very close to the cylinders uh, where ping might happen, they can hear it very, very easily. They used to be located on the outside, but it was discovered this was a much better and more ideal setup. So a little bit of a pain in the neck if you need to change one, but uh, overall a better design. So on our uh, knock sensor mounts here, uh, you can see that one of the seals did not come with our lifter valley plate. So we're just gonna grab some channel locks and work that off. And don't worry too much about getting crud inside the engine. This whole thing's gonna be hot tanked later. So getting stuff in here right now is not that big a deal. So now we can focus on removing our cylinder heads, which means we need to remove our valve covers here. And I'm only gonna show you how to do one side since they are identical. So the valve covers come off with these four eight millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and remove those bad boys. Those are a little, those are a little funky looking. Make sure you set those aside. Don't lose them. So we can remove our valve cover and expose our valves and rocker arms. So this is your valve cover seal. You will be replacing this. Do not reuse them. You're already here. Just replace the seal. So in order to get the heads off, you're going to have to remove your valve train here. And what you need to know about this valve train is it's pretty slick. It has a roller trunnion, but it has a standard non-roller tip. And if you're going to reuse your valve train, make sure all of the valve train goes back together the way you found it. So this rocker has to go in this position with its push rod in its correct orientation because those metal surfaces get used to wearing together. And if you change that, you can cause premature wear and then you're taking this whole thing apart again. So if you're gonna reuse your valve train, make sure everything goes into its correct hole in its correct uh, orientation. And same thing goes for lifters, but we'll get to there soon. Now, in our situation, we're going to go ahead and replace all the valve train. I encourage you to do the same. And these are eight millimeter bolts to remove our rocker here. <clears throat> I 
Go ahead and hold on to that bolt. Probably gonna reuse that, honestly. And then we can remove our rocker. And you can see that this is a really nice roller trunnion. Check that out. That's actually kind of cool because it can't rotate all the way around and get put in incorrectly. The round part always faces down. So that's pretty cool. It's a good design, I like that. We can go ahead and set that aside. And then we can remove our push rod as well while we're at it. Now, if you're going to reuse these, just like I said, make sure this push rod goes back in this hole for number one and its orientation is correct. Don't flip it around the other way. Make sure it goes back in just like that. But that doesn't apply to us because we are gonna be putting new valve train in. Now just do that for all 16 for both sides. Hang on to this too, because it's a non-wear item. We're probably just gonna clean this up and reuse it. All right, so the next thing we can do is remove our four spark plugs on each side using a 5.8 spark plug socket. You could probably do this at any point, but ugh, we're doing it now. The only tip I have for you is when you're removing your spark plug, make sure it is fully seated down on the spark plug nut, because you don't want to round it off. That applies to every spark plug you'll ever encounter in your entire life. And then what I want you to do with these plugs is go ahead and just toss them in the trash and buy new ones. It's also a good idea right now to check your threads to make sure that the uh, integrity of them looks pretty good like these do. There's a little bit of crud in there, but the metal of the thread looks really good. Because if they didn't, uh, that means the spark plug hole inside the head is uh, galled or messed up somehow, and that's gonna need to be addressed. Now we can move on to removing the cylinder head. So as you can see, due to the age and mileage of this engine, you can barely see the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the head on right here. Uh, we're gonna get a standard screwdriver and scrape some of that uh, sediment and crud out of there. Now, if you're doing a full rebuild like we are, don't worry about getting crud down and inside the engine. Uh, it's not that big a deal since we're gonna hot tank it. But if you're not gonna do that, put some shop towels down to make sure you don't get anything down inside your motor. There, now you can actually see the bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to these uh, top five bolts. All right, so what we're gonna do is remove the top five 10 millimeter bolts first, since they're those smaller bolts. Uh, they're not holding as much load as the big ones, and if you took the big ones out, all that load is gonna be stressed on these little teeny tiny bolts. You can damage the head, you can cause all kinds of problems uh, with that. So we're gonna go ahead and take the little ones out first. And they're just 10 millimeter. They're not in terribly tight. Then we can remove our bolts and set those bad boys aside. So the next thing we can do is remove the 10, 15 millimeter bolts. These are pretty stout bolts. They're in very, very tight. And as a result, I am using my half inch impact gun. You could use a breaker bar to the same effect. And uh, our loosening pattern is very similar to our tightening pattern uh, when we're gonna be installing it. And we're gonna do like an outside spiral coming in like this. So just follow along and you'll be fine. So we're gonna start with the bottom right. Hold on to these as well because they're pretty uh, stout bolts and it'd be nice to not have to pay for these. Some people like to replace these. Uh, we might be replacing them. Um, and in some application they're torqued to yield and you have to replace them. These might be that way. Um, I'm gonna check them before we put them together. I'm not sure if they're torqued to yield or not. They could be, so um, hang on to them. But if we have to replace them, we'll let you know when we're putting it back together. So I just found out that the middle ones are a kind of different actually. They don't have a long shank or anything. They're just thread basically all the way up to the top, nearly. Um, so make sure that you denote that these are different from the ones on the bottom. So keep that in mind. So I was wrong. Check that out. They put a long one in the center. So I think the two outer ones are different than all the rest. That's my current theory. I'll let you know if it pans out. All right, so 
The two outer ones here and here are those different bolts and the rest of them look like this. Okay, so what I've done is I've orientated my engine stand so that way the uh, head is facing parallel with the ground. So that way if I you know, go overzealous and I take this off, it doesn't just drop on my foot immediately. So you wanna be a little careful with that. What we're gonna do is take a nice long half inch extension, put it in our exhaust port here because there's really no way to get any kind of prying implement on the flange surfaces. So what we're gonna do is just gently, yeah, I didn't mean to take very much, very gently with a half inch there because you don't wanna damage that port either if you plan on reusing these heads. And they're pretty light, they're made of aluminum and you can just lift straight up and expose our glorious cylinders. So this is what your combustion chambers look like. You can see our intake and exhaust valves. You can tell which one's the intake, which one's the exhaust. Intake's always bigger um, because it is harder to draw air in than it is to push it out. So the intake needs to be a bit bigger. We can go ahead and set this aside. It's pretty light because it's aluminum. And we can go ahead and remove our head gasket. We'll just throw that right in the trash. So these are what your cylinders look like. Um, this is an okay shape for an engine that has 265,000 miles on it. And you can see that it hasn't been ran in a while because the intake valve was open and a bunch of stuff and water and whatnot got in there. And you can also see our lifter retainers here. They even have little springs down in there to help the valve train out. This one's a little loose. It should be like this one, not loose. So. That's interesting. But with all that out of the way, we can go ahead and do the other head as well. So a good indication on wear on engines, and this is true with every engine, is you can take your fingernail and try to grab the edge here. That's called ridge ream. When that comes up from the piston, it only comes up so far. So that material is getting worn down. So the very top of it is how it came from the factory, exactly. And uh, that difference of material, you can catch your fingernail on if there's just like a ton of wear or, you know, even if it's like super bad, you might not be able to uh, machine it the way you want to. But this is perfectly good. So we're gonna take a break from disassembly for just a moment because I wanna turn your attention to this description. So I bought this off of eBay, like I mentioned earlier, and look at the comments. Runs good, see link in private, or see link to video in private note. And you think, wow, that's really cool of them. What they don't tell you is they took this engine out, it sat around, and a bunch of stuff got in it. So I wanna show you, do you guys think that this would run good? Do you really think that this would be good? Or do you think that it would cause major, major problems and damage and maybe even self-destruct? Yeah, probably the second one. So I just wanted to go over this and show you guys, don't put used motors in your stuff. Just rebuild it. All right, so now we're gonna remove our lifter retainer here, and it's just one 10 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that, set that aside somewhere special. And we can remove this, just like that, set this aside. Don't know if we're gonna reuse that or not. So now we can focus on removing our lifters, and we'll show you how to do one of them, because they're all identical. Now, they do make special tools that remove these without harming them, uh, especially if you're going to be reusing your camshaft and your lifters, but we're not gonna do that in this situation, so we're just gonna use a pair of channel locks. Now, because these are rollers, and they're a little tough to get out because a bunch of crud gets in there. Because these are rollers, they last a very long time and they're very high quality, but you have to know which way you took them out. So I took it out like this, so its orientation has to go back in the way I took it out. If you 180'd it this way, that's no good. You gotta keep it just like this, and it has to go back in the hole you took it out of. Make sure everything goes back in the way you took it out if you're gonna reuse your valve train, but we are not. So these are going in the trash. So the next thing we're gonna do is focus on getting this dampener off. Now, the first thing we need to do with that is remove the dampener bolt. It's a 24 millimeter. Now, if you don't have a half inch impact gun like I do, you're going to need to be able to uh, hold the dampener somehow and then use a large pry bar. So what you can do is use a large pry bar like this and hold it in place with a lot of force or even have a helper uh, hold the dampener in place. They also make a special tool that does it. But hey, if you have a big pry bar, use that. In conjunction with a big breaker bar. So go ahead and remove this bolt. There we go. Now this is a really special bolt. Hold on to this, put it somewhere safe. So in order to pull this off, it's not like on our big block where it had um, holes on the front of the dampener, threads that you could thread bolts into. Um, this uses a three draw puller. And basically the jaws are gonna go into these little grooves here, and then you're gonna spin it so it rotates and locks into place on these tangs. 
And basically the job of the puller is to not damage any of the threads down in the snout of the crankshaft. So this is the threaded piece off our three jaw puller. You can rent these at AutoZone for free, but uh, the one we got is the threads on this are just a little bit too short. So it bottoms out too far down and will have no room to be able to um, tighten and pull the dampener off. So we had to do a little bit of a modification. It takes just a few minutes. So this point piece is off of another puller we had laying around. These are pretty commonly found and it sits right in that nice chamfered surface there on the end of the crank snout. Now, you might be wondering, how do you get this to interface with this? Well, the answer is actually really simple. You take a 716 socket, you take the 716 socket, put it there, and then this, it's really hard to, you know, walk it around. You know, it won't be able to kind of go cattywampus on you. It will more or less stay right there and do its job while this is turning and pressing the puller off. The next thing you want to do is apply some wheel bearing grease or any kind of synthetic grease would probably work I imagine and apply it nice and liberally to these threads. That's perfect. So this is our universal three jaw puller. They do make special pullers just for this application that you won't have to kind of rig to make work. Um, this is just the one that's available at your local AutoZone for either $40 for purchase or free to rent. So what we can do is slide the jaws into those um, little gaps, little cutouts I was talking about earlier. Oops. It can be a little tricky because you got to handle three things at once. There we go. So they're in those grooves and then you can just rotate it to the right like that, making sure that all three jaws are in their homes because if one slips off, it's like really bad. So I've changed the camera positioning a little bit so that way you can see what the jaw looks like when it's secured in its home. So if it's off like this, make sure it is nice and square and has plenty of meat to grab onto. So what we can do now is install our drive screw here just enough until it gets close enough where we can put our little adapter arrangement. All right, and it's important to note I put some grease at the end of our socket here, but again, if you have the right puller, you won't have to do what I'm doing. There we go. Now make sure everything is nice and square as well. You want it as square with each other as possible. Now before you start go tightening, go around and double check the puller to make sure that the arms or the jaws are on those tangs we talked about earlier. Now it's at this point, don your safety eyeglasses. You're dealing with a ton of pressure here and well, you don't want that in your eye, but any piece of it. So we can go ahead and grab a 5.8 socket. Now if you don't have an impact gun, uh, you're gonna probably be using a breaker bar while holding the harmonic balancer. Once it gets to the very end, it's not held on very tightly. And then we can remove our tool from our harmonic balancer and our job's done. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much Racing for sponsoring this build. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming engine builds such as our 5.3 liter LS or even our uh, Chevrolet 454 big block Chevy, which yes, I'm still working on it. I'm just uh, getting a couple more details ready to get it running in my Camaro. Putting a big block in a GMF body is actually a little more tricky than I thought it would be. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.